Well, if you would, take your Bibles and turn with me to 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter number 4. 1 Peter chapter 4 again. Moving toward the Lord, I trust. Moving toward the Lord. I found out one thing about trying to live a life, a spirit life, a spirit-filled life. Sometimes uh, it's... Um, hard to put your finger on. I've said it many times, if you cannot explain it, sometimes that's the Lord because you can't explain God. I mean, you can no doubt tell people about the Lord, and but truly, how can you explain God? I mean, he, he, he's God. <laughs> he's sitting on the throne. He's doing his will. He is working and moving and working the hearts. He does miracles, and people think miracles are dead. Miracles still just as alive. Uh, is there ever been? God's not dead, so miracles are still alive. Uh, and so, but I, I'm trusting the Lord's going to move this, move in your heart this morning. There's just a couple verses that I want to draw your attention to. Uh, I guess this message God has helped me with, and I don't know how much of a message it is. It's just a thought, honestly. As I've been burdened the last some few days, and especially this morning, just all the phone calls and all the uh, the struggles that people are in, and I, I, I just I just want to share something with you that God helped me with, and that's all that is this morning. It's just a message uh, that God helped me with, and I want to help you. A man told me years ago, if it speaks to the heart, if it gets to your heart, it'll speak to somebody else's heart, and I, I just know God's going to use this because we are going through some trials. And some troubles uh, in this life. And so First Peter uh, chapter 4. If you have your Bibles there. Look with me if you will in verse number 11. First Peter chapter 4 and verse number 11. If any man speak. Let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister. Let him do it as if the ability which God giveth. That God in all things may be glorified. That's my goal for my life. I hope that's a goal for your life is to glorify God. I hope you set out to do that. All things may be glorified through Jesus Christ to whom be praise, dominion forever and ever. You want to praise the Lord? You want to glorify the Lord? I got one amen right over here. So, so you want to praise the Lord, don't you? <laughs> do you want to glorify the Lord? Do you? You want to praise him? Do you? You want to honor him with your life? It's getting lower and lower. Well, we started out weak, strong, now we're weak again. You want to honor the Lord? I do. I want to glorify him. I, I remember getting saved. I remember getting saved uh, when I was 23 years old. I remember God digging me up out of a pit and put my feet on a rock and established my going to put a new song in my mouth. And I said, whatever I'm ever going to do, I'm going to do it for God. He saved me, and I believe with all of my heart, he gave me something to do. And I set out that day to give my heart and life to the Lord. I've not done all I should do, but with everything in me, I want to honor him and glorify him because of what he's done for me on the cross. But I got bad news for you. You're not going to do it laying down. You're not going to glorify the Lord sitting down. What I mean by that, doing nothing. What I mean by that, yeah, I want to honor the Lord. I, I want to please the Lord. Okay, let's read it. Behold, uh, excuse me, verse 12. Beloved, right before he tells us how we can glorify him and praise him, he speaks tender to us. Beloved. Isn't that a great term? I, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm not going to maybe not preach here this morning. Very much. Yeah, I probably will, but... I, but I'm just going to give you what God's speaking to my heart. I read that this morning. He called me beloved. <laughs> beloved. When, you, when your sweetie talks to you, it does something, doesn't it? You got little words, little word, fur phrases, little nicknames, little whatever. I, I told the story. I went across the guy one time. He called his wife a heifer. And I spun around. I said, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. He said, oh, no, those are flirting words. I said, I'm going to ask her next time I see her. He made me mad. He called his wife a heifer. 
She came into the work where I was working. I called her by name. Her name was Shelly. Shelly walked in. I said, hey, I said, your husband just called you in my presence a heifer. He said, she said, yeah. <laughs> Blowed my story all up. <laughs> called her a heifer. I said, boy, that wouldn't fly in my house. Probably wouldn't fly nobody in this house either. <laughs> heifer. <laughs> we all understand those names. But God said to me this morning, beloved. That's what he says. Comma. Think it not strange. What's the first thing you do when bad things happen? God's against me. <laughs> How bad is it? It'll never get better. God's not against you. Look what it says. Beloved, think it not strange. What? Concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. God's speaking to me about this. God's dealing with me in my study this morning as I sat down and read that. I thought, okay, Lord, I'll be you. I, I, I understand you love me. I understand that the things I've went through, the things I go through, the things I have been through or will, uh, it, it's for my good. It's hard to understand, isn't it? You tell the world that. You tell lost people that. that the trials and the, and the things you go through is for your benefit. They'll say you're crazy. But look what God does with it. Verse 13, but rejoice. You what? Be happy about it? Rejoice. Insomuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering that, comma, when his glory shall be revealed, it, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. <clears throat> I'm going to try to change your mind this morning about trials and temptations. I'm going to try to help, by the help of God, give you an understanding the difference between a temptation and a trial. Huge. God spoke to my heart last night. I'm reading through a book. It's really helping me. I'm running through a book about being spiritual. I want to be spiritual. Now, I'm not talking about walking around with my nose stuck up in the air. I'm not holier than thou. That's not what I'm talking about. Being spiritual simply is just doing what God wants you to do. Being spiritual is just being led of the Lord. Being spirit, we, I've been, uh, we, not, we've talked about the Holy Spirit, and, and I want to be controlled by Him. I want to be feel, filled by Him. I want to, every day, I want to be able to say, I've done what God wants me to do today. I fail miserably, but I have a desire, my bosom come, come from the Lord to do what He wants me to do. I want to be yielded to Him. So when trials or temptation comes in your life, how do we identify them? How do we describe them? And how do we develop from them? Temptation, I wrote it on the screen, temptation is not sin, but yielding to temptation is sin. We're all tempted by the devil, the flesh. You're all going to face temptation. You're kidding yourself if you think you're going to live this life in a sin-cursed world where there's sin rampant and we not have temptation. But yielding to it is the problem. We're all tempted. We're all going to face temptation. But the problem is, is how are we going to deal with it? How are we going to react to temptation? I've got to realize that there's a vast difference between temptation and a trial. If we're not careful, they'll muddy together and we'll blame God for things that happen. And we'll get angry at God when it's really a trial which he is to try to try you and to try to develop you. So that's for the next few minutes while we're together. Let's evaluate a temptation or a trial. Well, we understand trials are going to come and temptation are going to come. Something that... God spoke to my heart last night about was trials come from above. They are godly. As bad as they sound and bad as they seem, as bad as they look on the outside, there's a trial. Not all trials that we go through is God sent. We've self-inflicted some of those. But the things that come from above, God is using those things to work and bring the dross to the top. Temptation comes from below and beneath and from within. The devil is always tempting you. 
And something staggered me last night in my study as I read to my wife. I was sitting there and just reading and meditating on today and trying to get ready for today. And my Sunday usually starts on Thursday, but it really gets started on Saturday. And I'm really concentrating and asking again. And last night, God done something in my heart that I had not seen Temptation comes from below and uh, from beneath and from within. And trials come from above. And uh, they're trying to uh, get me to the next level, spiritually speaking. And temptation is always trying to drag me down. So I've got to figure out what's trials for, where's temptation, where's it going to be? Trials must come. Matter of fact, it says in John 16, listen what it says in John 16. Please don't get in your mind that you're going to live life without trials. We, we, we prayed about a bunch of them this morning. I, I know a bunch of people that are struggling this morning. They're in a trial. They're in a situation that they didn't ask for. I'm thinking about uh, Brother Tim Thomason and lost his brother. And Brother John, they're in a hospital with a heart blockage. And I'm thinking about uh, Frankie. And I'm thinking about all these people that's on my mind. And they're, 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 got, they're going through things. And in John 16, the Bible says this. These things that I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. He said, you live here very long, you're going to go through troubles. You're going to go through trials. You're going to go through difficulty. Here's another one that's really good. I, 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 this verse came to my mind, and I really want to share it with you in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Listen to this verse. It's a powerful verse. First, 2 Corinthians 4 and verse number 8. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but yet not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always a bearing about in the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus and the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. He is working and the trials that you're going through is he's trying to get you to be like Christ. Who are we to think that we're not going to suffer a little bit? We're not going to go through some trials a little bit. When we look at the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross and the life he lived, he didn't live a cakewalk. He lived a life of annihilation. He lived a life of, uh, of ridicule. He lived a life of scrutiny. He lived a life of absolute, uh, just terrible life in the sense of the way they treated him. Notice it says in 2 Corinthians 7 and verse number 5. I love this verse. Notice what it says. For when he was come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest. <laughs> that feels that way, doesn't it? Is it ever going to quit? He said, our flesh had no rest, but we are troubled on every side. Without were fightings. Within were fears. You know where our battle comes from? It comes from the out. It comes from within. But I'm not going to stop there. I'm not going to dwell on the battle. I'm not going to dwell on the enemy. I'm not going to dwell on the bad. I'm going to dwell on God. Verse 6 says, nevertheless, God. Hey, the next time you get in despair, the next time you get in trouble, the next time you go into some kind of trial, you just stand up and say, nevertheless, God. And I guarantee you things will change. Because what you just did, you just put your trust in God. And I promise you this, God can work right there. I'm in a trial, Lord. I'm in a difficulty, Lord. I can't look up. God said, you just trust in me. Nevertheless, God. The Bible says, comfort those that are cast down. Well, I'm about to get right right here. The Bible says, I'm going to comfort those that are cast down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to strengthen those, verse 7, and not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherein he was comforting you. God says, you call out to me, I'll answer. But you won't answer unless you're in a trial. I, I'm not minimizing, I'm not making light of anything that was being called, but I promise you this, those that called me, those that said we need trouble, uh, we need prayer, it's because of trouble. Now, I didn't have anybody call me and say, pray for me, preacher. My bank account's running over with money, and I don't know what to do. <laughs> Nobody said that. They said, I'm in trouble, preacher. What'd they do? They run to God. That's where you ought to run. That's where we ought to run. Nevertheless, I love that verse. Nevertheless, God, comma. That's enough. We could just stop right there and go home. Nevertheless, God. 
a trial comes from him. He's trying to work the dross out of you. He's trying to, excuse me, whoop the meanness out of you. He's trying to get you to the place where you'll serve him. He's got to put you in a corner somewhere where you'll come out and come out different. Trials are unpleasant. They're difficult. They're, un, uh, they're alarming. They're soul-searching. They're bitter. I don't like a trial. But I do like what it yields. I do like what it produces in my life. I don't like the activity. I don't like the behavior part of it. But I do know this. When I've come through the other end of a trial, I'm a little bit better than when I went in it. I got to talk to my dear friend yesterday, Tim. His brother fell dead tragically yesterday. And I got to call him and tell him how God helped me when I found out my brother died tragically. That trial that I didn't like... That trial that I didn't care for. But God gave me strength and God gave me understanding. And I understood what the peace of God is. And I preached about it and I talked about it. But I really understood it, what it was like. And I could help him with it, hopefully. That trial I didn't like, but God used it in a very special way. He tells us in 2 Corinthians 4 to rejoice as we read it. Rejoice. That doesn't make any sense, Lord. I don't, I don't understand how I'm to rejoice when bad things happen. That's what he tells us. Notice what he said in verse 16. For which we faint not, but through our outward man perish. You know what a trial do? A trial causes your outward man to perish. And I don't know if you know that or not, but that's what you want. You want the flesh to die. Not literally, but I'm talking about this carnal flesh. We want it to die. We want to crucify it. We want to mortify it. We don't want to give it its way. We don't want the flesh to have its way. I promise you this. You don't want your flesh to have its way. You will be wrecked and ruined. He said, for we know if we faint, the outward man perisheth, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. You ever got in your place in your life and you just feel like, I mean, I just can't go another step. I'm just drugged down and I'm beat down and this is discouraged and this is deep beat down and this is this. And you just keep, you know what's happening? Your flesh is weak, but your spirit's strong. That's exactly what that verse is saying. So the next time a trial comes and you don't think you can handle any more, just know this, your inner man is being strengthened. He said it in verse number 17, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, Worketh for us a far more exceeding, notice this, an eternal weight of glory. If I could convince you this morning that the trial you're going to go through and the trial you'll be coming through will make you more like Christ, surely will he take it. If it's going to make me better, not that I'm asking for it, but I'm going to trust him in it. A trial is often bitter. It's often unpleasant, but it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness. And then God struck me with this, temptation. How can I identify temptation? I'm going to shock you here. Hold on to your seat. Temptations usually come with things you enjoy. I'm not against things we enjoy. But I have found this out, and God dealt with me about this last night. The things that are most tempting to you are the things that are most pleasant and most enjoyable to you. You know what the devil does? He takes what you like. He takes what I like. He amplifies that thing about ten times. And he sets it before you and says, now right here is what you need. And it won't hurt you. Just do it one time. And more than likely, the first time, it feel good. Maybe the second time. See, the sa Satan don't play fair. He does not attack the first time you uh, indulge, typically. Sometimes he does. But if he can lure you into some temptation that you like, if he can lure you into that particular episode of life and you put your guard down and you let the flesh have its way, you have fallen into that temptation and all of a sudden it's like quicksand. You cannot get out of it. 
It's always something uh, that's immediate. It's always something that's an instant gratification. So he tells us to rejoice in a trial, but he tells us to fear a temptation. If you like it, it's pleasant. It's enjoyable. If you're not careful, it'll get away from you. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you the verse. Look within Genesis chapter 3. You can just listen to it. It's pretty powerful when you think about it. We're all in a mess because of one decision. Everybody in this room is in a mess. It's called sin. And we inherited it from Adam and Eve. Adam gave you his sin-tainted blood. And every one of us in here carry the blood of Adam. So we're all sinners. He did that very act with a temptation. Here's what he said in Genesis chapter 3. In verse number 6, he said, the serpent said to Eve, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was, what? Pleasant to the eyes. Right here is our problem. Temptation comes through the eye gate. It enters into the heart. And for long, it'll be with the hands. If we can stop it in our eye gate, if we can stop it in our heart, if we can stop it hitting our hands, we have destroyed temptation. He told her, he said, she said, that Satan told her, said, it's pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired. So we see what she saw. We see it's pleasant. It was desired to make one wise. And she took. That's it, isn't it? That's it. I like this, preacher. This feels good. I like the way this makes me feel. Yeah, that will only last for a little while. The Bible says there's pleasure in sin only for a season. You better flee temptation. Matter of fact, I'll even go a step further to tell you young people, he encourages yet the more you young. He said, flee youthful lust. Flee you for us. Don't you get wrapped up in some temptation, uh, something that will cause you to fall and to fall into sin. Temptation is a preliminary to sin. You'll never fall into sin unless you're first tempted. And they'll always tempt you with something you like. He'll always tempt you with something that is pleasant, something we enjoy. May God help us. Rejoice. God's working. God's working. Rejoice. Satan doesn't shoot one fiery dart. He shoots fiery darts. One temptation after another temptation. There's one, there's two. Isn't it crazy? You get victory over one, and five more come. You've got to be wide awake to the lies of the devil. Trials or temptation. Let's pray. Father, thank you for speaking to my heart with this message. Lord, I trust the Holy Spirit would take this and apply it to the hearts of those listening. Lord, I pray for the young people that's in this room that are tempted, sometimes way above measure. They need your strength. I pray that you would give them courage and strength to avoid that temptation. Lord, I pray for those that's in this room that are going through trials. We heard a bunch of them this morning going through trials. Help us to understand that you're using those trials to get the dross out of our life. To refine us. To be the image of your dear son. Help us to not grow bitter in a trial, but to rejoice in a trial. To understand and to realize that a trial that we're going through is something you're using to cause us to grow closer to you. To flee fornication. To flee temptation. To flee the things that is so before us. Do that work I cannot do, Lord. I I plead with you in Jesus' name. 
trial or temptation, which one are you in? You're probably in one or the other, or maybe both. If you're in a trial, don't get bitter at God. If you're in a trial, nevertheless, God. Nevertheless, God. If you're facing temptation, don't succumb to it. Don't succumb to it. Don't give in to it. people do we know that fell to temptation? Let it overtake them. Maybe as we're sitting here quiet, just for a minute, we'll conclude just for a minute, but Brother Daniel sing a verse of this, that God work. I don't know how God would use this. I know He used it in my heart. You listen. really want you to talk to him he just really wants you to talk to him in a trial or a temptation that's what he wants let's pray together and I'd like to dismiss all those that are going to be the release time we're going to go into March Sunday school class and do a training session just for a few minutes and we'll have the pizza in there we can eat and just go ahead and get started and have that going on so we can get that took care of and I appreciate those that volunteered and if you'd like to be a part of that you can meet with us in the room there and and get an idea of what's going on. Release time is picking up children at the at TNT school and bringing them here and teaching a Bible lesson to them. And I'm um, always excited to teach a Bible lesson to children. And so many of y'all remember it as Bible Lady. Some of y'all grew up here, Bible Lady. And I always like to tell Mark Recca was a Bible Lady man. <laughs> That's a real crazy phrase, isn't it? But uh, we appreciate Miss Jenny Boggs. She's over it now in this area, and we appreciate her. She's been with us today, and she's going to be with us for this training session. So we appreciate her getting this started back and having a bird to do that. And uh, praise God for that. Amen. Let's pray together and we'll be dismissed. Father, we do love you. I love you, Lord. I want to say I love you. Thank you for those sweet words. Thank you that I'm your beloved. Lord, it's sweet to to hear from the God of heaven. It's sweet to know that I'm yours and that you're mine. No greater joy I have in my heart to know that the God of heaven spoke to me. And in these trials and these temptations and things that come our way, I pray you'd help us to look to you and lean on you and trust you. As Job said, though he slay me, well, I trust him. And it's easy preaching, but hard living. And so I do pray for those that are under burdens at this moment, those we mentioned and those that's in the hearts of people in this room. Help us to look to you. Nevertheless, God, and we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.